In today's video, I'm going to teach you some of the tools, the techniques and the procedures required to repair just about any electronics device out there when you don't have access to service manuals, board views, schematics and part lists. And what those are, are files provided by the manufacturer to help assist you in repairing electronics devices. So let's get started. The purpose of today's video is to get as many people as possible interested in electronics repair and one of the biggest hurdles for people to get interested in electronics repair is all the technical jargon that all of us technicians use so with that in mind I am purposefully going to ditch as much technical jargon as possible and teach you everything today in baby steps if you're a complete beginner and you've always wanted to learn a bit more about electronics repair but you've been put off by all the stuff that you seemingly may have to learn. This video is for you and it's tailored for you. So as you're probably aware, electronics devices nowadays are not designed to be repaired. They are designed to be replaced or thrown away. But if we have access to three things, we can overcome this. What are those three things? They are the right tools, a working version of whatever it is you're trying to repair and an inquisitive mind. If you have access to these three things we can overcome those issues and we can repair just about anything. So with the title of today's video in mind, how to repair anything, I wanted to pick out something completely random and something I have never worked on before. So what I chose was this device here, a Samsung Synth 7 Professional UHF Wireless microphone system. Now if we go down here into the description it says the item has an internal fault as the microphone will not connect to the receiver. Due to the fault the item is being sold for spares or repair. The item includes antennas, lavalier mic and UK power cable. So I've purchased this and um, it's actually been delivered now and remember the the other thing that I mentioned in the beginning of the video you need the right tools, you need a working version of whatever it is you're going to repair and you need an inquisitive mind and now we need a working version of this uh, of this equipment so what I also did was I bought a fully working version as well so this one here these are not available in the UK, I purchased this one from the US um, you can see here this is uh, well it was described as brand new. In the description here it says Samsung Synth 7 professional UHF wireless system brand new never used. So anyway I've ordered this and it's arrived so I have a working version of whatever it is I'm trying to repair and I also have a faulty version here okay. Now remember we don't we cannot control access to schematics and service manuals we can only get hold of them if the manufacturers release them to us and they will try every trick in the book to hold them back from the public getting their hands on them okay because they don't want you to repair their devices basically they want to either repair it themselves or they want you to replace it so I could not get hold of a service manual for this anyway I tried right and the purpose of this video was to show you how to repair something when you cannot get hold of the service manuals right and that's what we're going to do now. So let's get back to the demonstration table. Okay, so we have our faulty electronics device in front of us. And what we're going to do is we're going to switch it on and we're going to observe some of its behaviors and characteristics and then we'll take it from there. So if you have a look here, the receiver is on channel F10 and the transmitter is also on channel F10. Now, normally what you, what you would expect to see on the receiver is a couple of bars here where the network is displayed and where the audio or the speaker is displayed here you would see a couple of bars for the sound so when you speak in the microphone those bars would go up and down and as you move around with the transmitter the bars here would uh, go down up and down relative to how far or near you are to the device but basically you'd have bars on both of these sections here but as we can see there is no connection between the transmitter and the receiver. Now, the first thing that we have to do is we have to find out whether the fault is in the transmitter or whether the fault is in the receiver. And how are we going to do that? 
Well, we know that the transmitter operates off uh, radio frequency, right? Of, uh, it's a RF signal that it emits, and that RF signal is picked up by the transmitter. So there's a special tool that we can use to test if this transmitter here is giving off any RF frequency. And um, once we test that, if we see that it is giving off uh, radio frequency or RF frequency, then we can deduce that this transmitter is fine and we can start to solely focus on the receiver. So let's do that now. Okay, so the first tool that I want to introduce you to today is called an RF frequency tester. And it's this tool here. And this tester is actually a two-in-one tool so not only can it test radio frequency, it can also test for an infrared signal as well. And um, I'm going to explain to you where, in what scenarios we would use this tool here. So let's say, for example, if I was uh, repairing a remote control for someone. Okay, this is the remote from uh, our TV in our lounge. And uh, I've done the repair. Now I need to test. I haven't got the TV here of the customer whose remote that I'm repairing. So how can I test that this uh, infrared remote control is given off a signal? The way I can test it is by using an infrared tester. As I said, this is a two-in-one. So what we would do is we would switch this on. It's just, it's just like this. It's just a little tool like this. It takes a nine volt battery and it's got a switch on the side here, as you can see. And it's also got an infrared tester at the top. Okay, let's just say I've repaired this, this remote, and I need to check. So what I would do is I would switch this on. Okay, from the top, you press the top button. Right, and I can press any button on the remote and you can see that it's giving off an infrared signal. And that is how we test remote controls that we're working on when we don't have the other part to it. So that was the infrared testing part of this tool. Now it has another part which is called the RF testing part or the radio frequency testing part. And this tool here can test all the way from down to 10 megahertz all the way up to 1000 megahertz. So another time or another scenario where we would need this tool here is when we work on car keys. So for example, if let's just say you worked on this car key here and you repaired this car key. Now you need to test if this car key is giving off an RF signal. Now you can't, you don't have the customer's car here in front of you, right? If you had the car, you could just press the button and you could verify that the key is working the, or the RF part of the key, circuitry part of the key is working. But you haven't got the vehicle here, right? But you still need to test. Before you send this back, you still need to test that this is emitting an RF signal. And this is where we would use this tool again. So you bring the your, your key whatever key you're trying to test and you put it in this area here okay let me just show you that and then you press the this key here and look it tells you straight away it's given off a signal in the 450 464 megahertz range and if we press the second key right then that's giving off a signal in the 438 megahertz range okay so this is a tool that we can use to test whether an ele electronics device is giving off an RF signal or not. And what we're going to do now is we're going to use the same tool to test whether this transmitter is giving off an RF signal. So let's do that now. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put it next to the device and I'm going to switch on the wireless microphone transmitter. And here goes. And straight away you can see that the the tool here is picking up a signal of 633 megahertz and I can confirm that is correct because this transmitter here it operates on the 600 megahertz bandwidth so using this tool here today we were able to come to the conclusion that this transmitter here is possibly fine and we can focus or we can put out turn our attention to focusing on the receiver okay so we've kind of established that most likely the fault is with this receiver here. And now what we need to do is we need to do some investigative or diagnostic work to figure out what that fault is. But because this video is for beginners, I don't want to overload or bombard you with too much information all at once. So what I've decided to do is split this video up into three parts. And what I would now like to do is give you a sneak peek about what we're going to be learning about 
in part two. Right, so in part two of this series, I'm going to introduce you to three new tools. I'm going to introduce you to the variable DC power supply. I'm also going to introduce you to the thermal imaging camera. Okay, and lastly, I'm going to introduce you to the multimeter and then what we are going to do is use these three tools in combination to find the fault on this device and the techniques that I'm going to teach you you should be able to go away and apply those techniques to repairing just about anything once we're finished so make sure you look out for that video which will be released in the next couple of days as they say at the end of dramas to be continued. Bye for now and have a nice day.